It's a high-tech conversation. On the low-tech topic. Live on the World Wide Web via Zoom. Bench Talk 101. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bench Talk 101. So this week, we've changed it up a little bit with, uh, <laughs> with the uh, topic talks. And we've got a show and tell, a Steam show and tell, with crew tools that you've made to do a job. Now, we know that craftsmen made their own tools over time. We've seen examples of it. But what have you made? Show us what you've made. So I think the way we'll do it this week is if you pop your name in the chat, uh, we'll just go in order like we do with the questions after a talk. And we'll go from there. Who'd like to go up first? Richard. Richard, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, everyone. So uh, I, I would like to show you this fine tool for your uh, your uh, instruction and comments. As you can see, it can sit. It consists of a um, of a lump of uh, lead pipe, an Allen key. Richard, I think you've muted yourself. Yeah, my yeah, my tool uh, <laughs> mute, muted me when it fell on my keyboard. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so if anyone would like to guess what this is for, uh, or or I'll sit and just tell you what it what, what it is. Is it for muting your Zoom call? It it works very well for that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, no. What it's for is, um, it's, it's not a woodwork tool. It's a. Uh, it was a, a tool for for knocking the a uh, dent out of the, the, the tank of a motorbike. Um, so, with this, I was able to to reach inside the tank and um, and hammer from the inside against a um, a sandbag on the outside, and it it worked very well. How um how many dents do you get in your tank that you re the reason for keeping it and holding on to it? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, fortunately, only 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 one. <laughs> okay, what what make a motorbike is this? It, it's a, it, yeah, a Triumph. Yeah. Oh, and you knocked it out with a bit of lead. Blimey, good luck with that. Yeah. It must have been a newish Triumph then. Nineteen sixty-eight. Carnival. Cool. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, it took. Well, if you if you look at the end of this thing, it's quite. Uh, it it took quite a few, quite a bit of hammering to do it. Uh, it started off as a uh, as a nice straight piece of of, of lead pipe, and uh, it, it's well hammered over. I have to admit, I first thought it was a pipe because I couldn't see the end of the lead. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, a bit of improvisation there, but it but it did the job. But uh, I think it qualifies as a crude tool. So that's an Allen key, a box wrench, and a lump of lead. Yeah. I have to remember that next time I drop my Harley. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, your your Harley yeah. takes unleaded uh, fuel. Oh it? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> Okay, that's a, that's that one. So yeah, um, that's my offering for this evening. I've, I've got I've got another thing I might show you later on, but uh, maybe someone else would like to have a go now. Sure, Richard. Well, Jim, you've just muted yourself. You might want to unmute yourself again. Oh, I put you yeah. sent you some. I sent you some pictures because they because it was like kind of. Uh, well, I'm going to share screen for you. Difficult to show. Yeah, there you go. So it's guest time. I'm not going to be like Richard. I'm not going to tell everybody. I'm going to do a shredic for a, a handle on a saw and doing the uh, the nuts is that screwdriver oh it is our doing it's and it the is nuts, it's the nuts on a brace a brace on a brace yeah 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 and i have if you go back to ordinary i have here the let me just see if i can see myself because i can't see myself all i can see is chester <laughs> why can i only see chester there you go. Infatuation. So, so uh, one one brace wow. for Katie Tall type one. 
um, and the top thingy. So those two pins there for that part. So let's just do a, I did this earlier and one of my pins fell out and I lost it. So I've glued them back in again. So that then That's swings so off cool. like that. That go there. And the other and then, one does the screw inside And then inside, inside you see the, uh, uh, now, unlike saw nuts, excuse me, I'll repeat that. Unlike the nuts on saws, um, <laughs> this is deep, is deep and it has the bolt coming out, as you can see there. So this has to go, let me just see if I can register it without. This has to go in um, and, and sit over the top of that nut. So it's been hardened. And that goes in like that, and then you just wind it out, and it's left-handed thread, so it goes the other way, and that's locking it back up again. So then you can take off the um, these in these in some of these braces. There's a top nut which is left-handed thread, and then once you take that out, the bottom nut is right-handed thread. So the two lock down together when they're tightened up, which stops it undoing itself when it's rotating um, and then you can pull the um, you can pull the uh, shaft off off of the main frame here for any uh, if it gets if it gets loose or um, as I've done here with this one is put this boxwood washer in here because um, it needed um, extending outwards I mean the age of the, the actual mechanism was from a from a salvaged brace, which was smashed to pieces. And um, so it had suffered a bit in its life. So yeah, I made them for one one or two jobs and I've used them about 10 times since. But uh, yeah, so if you're ever gonna have to take the, uh, um, it's, simply, it's simply just a piece of uh, you here. And I've cut it so it's sap and, and um, heartwood. And then um, I've just inset a piece of O1 tool steel, just a thin, thin slither with two holes dr drilled in. And if you look at the um, the actual thing, there's two because there's different types of uh, widths. So you can take this pin out and put it in the next one along, uh -huh. uh, depending on your um, depending on your width. I was going to make this adjustable, but couldn't be bothered. It was just uh, unlikely to happen more than half a dozen times in my life. So. But yeah, so that's how you take those out carefully, not not the way other people take them out, which is stick two nails in there and use a screwdriver to wedge between the two. So it makes it much more. Um, uh, you've got to be careful you don't uh, damage those those two holes because it looks really unsightly uh, when it's uh, uh, when it's mullered. Uh, it's a bit like saw uh, nuts on saws when you you get people using screwdrivers and things and tapping them out. So it leaves the it leaves the holes perfect uh, afterwards. So that's my that's my uh, donation for the evening. I do Jim. love how the crudest of your tools are still beautiful, Jim. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask him what his definition of crude was because he's just ruined it for the rest of us. Well, this just sported. <laughs> it's just sported. Um, sported uh, maple. Yeah. Okay. I I don't think it is maple. No, it's not an American wood. It, it I think it was sported no? pear. Oh, There's a lot of too, yeah. pear grain in it. If you, you know that funny pear grain that you get, which is really beautiful. Yeah. It's like a silk, isn't it? It's like silk, but it's lovely sporting. And I thought, oh, what should I do with that? And as it ended up rather crudely wedged in the end of it. But uh, yeah, so there you go. And, oh, and, well. and also, sorry, just before I finish, because Shrenik, it was a special request from Shrenik, was the a close up of the, shut up, Alfie. Close up of the um, the chisel, um, the chisel that was used for the staircase saw. So this is used on its side uh, to uh, to do an undercut uh, in order for the saw blade to fit in a corner, and it's very similar to a, a mortise chisel, yeah. but it's 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 side on instead of. Uh, so when you're when you're trying to uh, cut out a mortise, it's actually in an undercliff, under cliff, as it were, and you just tap tap the end of it and, and aggressively cut inwards. But it's exactly the same as a, mortise, a little uh, pig sticker, but on its side. 
with a relief. So that was the last, uh, another crudely made one-off, um, just ground down really. That's it, that was for Shreni. Thanks, Jim. It's all right. Um, Ian Lambert. Hi. Uh, this was uh, something I got from Curtis Buchanan's uh, website, sharpening a, an inch shave or grinding the, the outside of it and keeping control of what you're doing. And uh, what he, he'd done was to create a, a little um, platform like this. So, so that would fit with the, the grinding wheel somewhere here. In my case, I needed to be able to clamp it onto uh, the table with a grinder on it and then adjust the, the bevel uh, so that the shave then sits against the grinding wheel at the, the correct angle and you can turn it around so you do the whole edge quite nicely. Well, that's the idea. Uh, so it was just a, a, a sort of base that I could clamp and then uh, I put a, one of those threaded things into the top here and uh, just an, an adjustable um, screw. Smart. So I could uh, change the, get the angle as I wanted it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> Kurt, you kind of got it from somebody else. I think he said that, uh, but it seemed to work really well. And all it's, it's a bit of a, a job in progress for me at the moment. Uh, first go, it, it certainly worked. And, you have easy control of the grind then. So in shave, grinding out the outside edge. The inside's a bit trickier. He shows you um, using a, yeah, a drum sander actually. Uh, for, so he, on his uh, drill press, he puts a drum sander and he, he does the inside with that. And mine was quite crudely ground actually and still needs some work. But I found an axe mincer, a little drum sander kit, uh, which was dead cheap. And uh, you get five sizes. Um, and you get a set of uh, um, grinding, uh, of, uh, abrasive wheel things to go around them, which you can uh, buy new ones of, replace them. And, and you tighten it up with a, a spanner at the bottom and it expands it so it grabs the abrasive material. And that was actually, it was about 15 pounds was this kit, uh, which I thought was remarkable. So um, that's my contribution. And I noticed the, uh, the box frame was dovetailed Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just having a little practice, you know, just <laughs> yeah, take a little opportunity to <laughs> why not? And they call me posh. <laughs> <laughs> you do you use a low speed grinder or, or what kind of wheel do you have on that uh, grinder? No, nothing special, actually. Well, it is designed one of these that's uh, supposed to be um, good for wood, but uh, no, it's a, just a six inch or a little bench grinder. Uh, and I forget what the, um, the grit's about a 60 or 80, something like that. Um, oh. So quite crude, really. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done once you've got your ground, your nice bevel on to polish it. So that's, I'm sort of at that stage really of having to go and uh, do a lot of handwork on it because it was, uh, it seems to be quite nicely made, but uh, in fact, um, particularly the inside, the, the very, very deep uh, grinding marks on here. So uh, yeah, um, not, not a great uh, finish on the tool at all. Could you make yourself a replacement grinding wheel with MDF and cover it with some sandpaper? <laughs> right, right, do that with an expanding device so it grabs it. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, you could. I'm sure you could. You could do lots of things, couldn't you? Just to make some crude little tool, uh, gluing stuff together and whatever. I'm starting to believe that the word crude does not mean what I thought it meant. Yeah, I was thinking rocks and sticks attached to the rocks and a lot of tape. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
crude dovetail jigs and crude uh, screwdrivers. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to Mitch. Hopefully Mitch has got something actually crude. <laughs> this really, really is crude. Um, if you can see it, maybe you can guess what it is. It looks like I'll a give stand. You some time to guess. This is, is bits from the uh, the waste bin in the workshop. It's a dry joint, just with some locking wedges into the bottom of those tenons. Uh, the knot hole phone. is not. It is indeed the holder phone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's a video that working. Excellent. The phone goes in there. That slides down. Uh. And then you can and clamp that to any surface you want. Live streams. So I was, I needed something to hold it, and it's got a nut uh, with a through hole there, or I'm going on the tripod. You, you Mitch, do how do you clamp it onto your uh, drone? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's with string, really, and failing twine. There's no money been wasted at Poundland. There, it's good to see. <laughs> do people still use the term "hold the phone"? <laughs> Very good. I like it. There's, there's no hook on it, so it's always off the hook. <laughs> Are you going to use it like a gimbal? Is it going to have another like uh, bearing on it, so that way you got the X, Y, Z axis? Uh, well, because it just screws on the top of my tripod, I've got all of those anyway. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Guys, yeah, get a ball uh, mount for your tripod. I don't use it anymore. That was the crudest thing I could find in my uh, in my workshop. No okay. ship. We'll move on to Richard then. Richard Arnold this time. Sorry. Well, I'm muted. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Doesn't come much cruder than that. <laughs> oh yes. Can we know what it is? Yeah. Andy does. No. I do. I made that probably about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. Been using it ever since. Never modified it. It's very crudely cut out, but it's served Wind well windows? For, for ages. Sorry? Something to do with windows? No, nothing to do with windows at all. We've all got a picture of one in the book. Yeah, there's one in the dictionary. Jim's got a picture in this book. And Sorry? Another, book, another book as well. Which book's that? I can't see what Andy's looking at. Uh, I've not got it off the shelf yet. Um, <laughs> is that a bit of a clue? Gallery review, that'll do. Right, so uh, it's the one in there. I haven't, I haven't looked yeah, through that. One in there. Yeah, I bet there is, actually, yeah. Chapter on uh, how to make a plane. Yeah. Basically, what it is, is uh, crude, rough blank, uh, for a plane that I've scrapped, basically. Um, but when you're checking your bed angle and how deep you've cut into your bed, you drop this in with the short leg inside the plane, and then you can check against that on your marking out on the outside of the plane to see right. how you're progressing to get the right angle and how deep you're cutting that into your into your block while you're forming the mouth, basically. It's as simple as that. Uh, it, it's, it's indispensable when you're making a plane, a bench plane anyway, but that is so crude, but so simple, but so effective. Page 135. Page 30, 135. 135. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. That's it, really. I don't know what the official term is. What does he call it? Oh, I've put, I've put uh, the book back now. Oh, hang on. I'm, I'm, I've got the book here. Angle guide. Tuning fork. Yeah. Tuning fork, yeah. Um, according to Salomon, it's called a bedding guide. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah. So how did I miss that, for uh, God's sake? I mean, the number of planes I've had to make and worked out by eye. That's ridiculous. You've never, worked, you've never made one of those? No. No, I, I just I just look at it and go, donk. You know that you know that bloke Anton 
I don't like me talk about it, it's go donk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to make one now, won't I? Yeah, yeah but you'll probably do it in rosewood with brush. I'm gonna do it in box word, <laughs> do it in box word uh, with a rosewood inlay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good idea anyway. I mean, I, I, I've just used a, 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 a six inch steel rule and, and sort of eyeballed it from the outside, but uh, clearly your device is much better. Yeah, it's a wooden x-ray machine. It is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Cheers. simple, but absolutely effective. And lots, I, I, I struggle to use make a play without one, but um, I can't even think. I probably sort of found it in Salomon. I don't know where. I probably just copied it out of there, I think. Oh. Well, thank you, Richard. Um, we'll move on to Matthias. Yep. Uh, in a way, here's one you've seen earlier. Uh, this is basically Technical. the same idea as what Jim was showing, but larger size and rather cruder. It's just a stick of pine, I think, and two M6, I'd say, bolts drilled uh, through it. Uh, but it was for the same sort of purpose. I needed to take the plastic bottom off of a thermos flask so that I could uh, remove the flask and change uh, the, the uh, liner, uh, the, 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 uh, the things ma making it watertight at the other end, the gaskets. Oh. And the bottom was, uh, it was screwed in plastic to plastic and quite difficult. You, you couldn't get a grip on it from below. So I made one of these. Uh, and it worked quite well, and it's crude. <laughs> Cheers, Matthias. Thank you. I think Matthias is winning on the crudeness uh, factor so far. No, I'd say uh, actually Richard Arnold is is winning the crude game as yet because he only has one material, whereas I have got two. <laughs> we should yeah, have both at the end, I think. Yeah. That's well sufficient. I thought it was one of those octagonal uh, boat thingies that we had with Mike Tupper um, for a second there, we, you know, and it's the third time since Mike's um, presentation that people have asked me, how do I cut octagonal handles um, when he made the oars and uh, he had the two nails sticking down and you, you put it like that and then scribed it. Um, and it was, uh, I thought it was one of those, but obviously not. No. I think it was 595, right? Uh, 7107. 7107. There's always somebody, it's like the people who know what the firing order of a V8 engine is. You know, it's one of those geeky people. Everybody uh, has to know that, 7107. <laughs> then, um, uh, a month and a half making spars for a film set, so I just remembered. <laughs> Well, um, let's move on to Richard Berry then. I was quickly doing a bench clear up here because it was in a ter terrible state. So that's why I've been doing moving around. Um, I'm quite keen on making tools for myself. So I, uh, I just want to show you one thing before I show you my crude one. Where did I hide this? I had it on my bench. Ah, oh, there it is. Jim Tolpin has put on YouTube a video on using a sector and he made available uh, plans to make a cardboard one. And I use those plans to make myself a wooden one. So I, I recommend anyone else who wants to put a sector together for themselves rather than making it out of cardboard where woodworkers make it out of wood. Uh, so this is my crude -ish. I also, I suppose I didn't understand the, the full term crude, but I needed a plane to be able to plane into the corner of a rebate. So, and I didn't have one. So I just found myself a nice piece of wood and knocked it together using a, a chisel. And that has served me quite well. But in the meantime, I've managed through 
eBay to get myself a nice replacement one. So. That's brilliant. How does the, um, the chisel rebate plane work in terms of how well does it work? Sorry. It works very well when the base is flat. Unfortunately, the wood does tend to move a bit. So I've got to re-flatten it because there's a bit of rocking in it. But when the wood is flat, it is brilliant. It works, even though the, the blade is straight, it's, it works well. Is it got any, where, where do the chips go when, when you take shaving? Uh, the escapement is very crude. Um, the wedge, Is shaped like that to try and get the chips to come out of the out of the side, but there's no no decent escapement on that. Because this is goes back a while before I understood things like escapement. I've only been at it a few years, so uh, does, I've learned a lot. Does it does it clog much, or does it actually work very well? Works pretty well. There's an occasional clog where it gets in behind it, and then I can remove it. But that's only when I'm really trying to take hog off quite a lot of material and a coarse chip gets in there. But other than that. What, what timber did you use for the body? Ah, it's very curly. I think it might be maple. Right. I, uh, the light's not great to show it. Um, I raid the off cuts bin in my local uh, timber place and that's where I found all this. Brilliant. Thank you, Richard. No problem. Thanks, um, man. I think I recognize a new name here, Lucky. Yeah, hey, folks. Um, hey, Lucky, how are you? Glad you could make it. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Um, this tool I made uh, doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, do you mind if I share my screen for a short moment? Jeffrey. Okay, you should be able to. You should be able to share it. Yeah. Do you do you see it now? Yeah, it's coming up. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, that's basically. Um, I was renovating my kitchen, and yeah, my, my grandparents had uh, glued or uh, um, flooring to the kitchen floor to the tiles. Um, and I needed a tool to get the um, yeah, to get the old glue off. So, and it was very tiring to just use the scraper, or the spatula. So, I built a sort of plane for it. Just uh, took a piece of timber, cut it to a forty-five degree angle, and sharpened the, the spatula. And yeah, clamped it on. And it worked really well. So, so do you hammer at the end of it? Uh, trust it, you mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, 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 to advance it forward. No, no, just, just like a regular hand, uh, hand plane. Oh, I got you. Nice. That's ingenious. Yeah, well done. Yeah, I like that. It was <laughs> yeah, very crude. <laughs> But That'd it would be superb for wooden floors, wouldn't it? For removing old uh, varnishes and stuff like that. That'd be absolutely superb. Yeah. Jimmy, I'm sure you didn't even have to have, take his shirt off to, to scrape those floors. <laughs> no, you can just shut up about that, right? That's <laughs> oh, dear. Woodworm as well. Yeah. That, I think that. Apart from this, the, the definition of a single piece of wood, that that actually, that that, that is definitely a crude bit of wood, that isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. I think I think we're um, you've set a precedent here now for what really crude is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there should be a prize for the crudest. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how that that looks like a chisel plane, but the previous one was actually a chisel plane. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, well, we'll move, now move on to Daryl. Ah, well, um, uh, a little bit of serendipity happened this week because on Monday I made a crude tool. 
I needed something to hit my fro with. So this is a piece of two and a half inch copper pipe. Um, and I melted three uh, beer, uh, pewter beer steins on the camp stove in a coffee can and poured that in there. And this is just a piece of rebar with some hockey tape on it for a handle. So now I have a two kilo hammer to hit my fro with. And it's crude and brutal. Now, what do you drink your beer out of? <laughs> oh, these were those horrible tacky pewter steins with a glass bottom in them that said 19th hole or Uncle Bob or something like that. Nobody wants to drink out of those. I have this. And it's soft enough that it doesn't mushroom the <laughs> throat. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Or wait. That's on the bottom. Stop. I have a son and a label maker. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It's the skull on the wall behind him. <laughs> oh, that's our pirate flag. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Got a paper that cool stuff now. So, so I, I have a crude, brutal tool for you. There you go. That was quite a specimen. What's the metal uh, you, you oh. did there? Pewter. Pewter, yeah. So yeah. That, has pewter got lead in it? No, it's tin. Oh. Tin, all right. I think you're in for number one spot. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, modern pewter does not have lead. If it's the old pewter from the 17th, 18th century, and that that has lead in it. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the old beer mugs that they used to have at the pubs and and saloons had it lead in it. So if you were drinking any acidic uh, brew you were getting a, a dose of lead poisoning at the same time. Six gun probably killed you first though. All right, before we get too, too morbid, we'll move on to Rick. Yeah, I, I'm the one that's supposed to be morbid. Um, so what I ran into uh, when I was making, this is pencil number three, I think that I made. Um, being a hexagon shape, you got to get all the three hexagons lined up properly. And uh, trying to use a wrench or, or like trying to tape it up or whatever to try and not mar the hardware, I found I kept on damaging it and it was uh, becoming a real problem. So I took a piece of oak and notched a, a hexagon shape into it. I actually drilled a smaller hole and then reamed it a little bit larger so I could kind of, um, so that as it ages, I can just thin it down and, and re, recut my, my hexagon in it. But with that, I can stick it in there and I can adjust stuff um, so that it's just exactly where I want it to be. Um, and being oak, it's softer than a lot of the woods I work, so it's not going to damage the, the wood. And then, of course, it's softer than the finish of the, the hardware. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, it gets a little loose and it starts to slip, and I have to trim it down a little bit. But my homemade wrench. Mm. Wonderfully simple. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, probably a, a 20 minute project that uh, has saved me hours over the years had it not been so beautifully cut out it would have won the uh, crudest of the day award it's not but real I'm afraid... beautiful right now but yeah it's it's the, the smallest and the 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 least uh you know it's only one part so, so yeah. shredding we need one for the smallest as well so <laughs> so so rick so rick can win jeffrey right? what do you got <laughs> Right, uh, we'll move on to Sean then. No, sorry, not Sean, uh, Eric. Hi there. Uh, I was been, I've been building a, a workshop for myself, been doing a lot of, a lot of cladding, um, and I very quickly, having to do it on my own, realised I couldn't be at both ends of a, a you know, four, four, four and a half metre length of cladding at the one time. So I started putting in some nails and balancing it on a nail, and that worked perfectly well. I got to the bit above the doors, and I'd, I'd foolishly put in a strip earlier, which was out of zinc, and I didn't want to nail a hole in it. So I needed a deep reach clamp to go over it, but didn't have one. So in five minutes, I, I 
got this, which is a bit of a, a couple of bits of shuttling brain. And it, it's, it's, you know, it, it was a thing to put up, but once you got it up, it was quite tight. And you, you know, balanced it. Balanced the, the shuttering at the point on top of it, and it did the job. So, an easy, an easy and quick fix. I mean, that, that's one of the one of these things that a lot of quick fixes sometimes they, they last. I mean, that's now a deep reach clamp that I'll keep and I'll have for next time and probably use it again and swear about it and think I should put something else in to stop the, the ends from wobbling, but uh, probably won't. I remember, oh God, about 30 years ago, we were having a, some guests in for dinner and my, my, one of my specialities is cheese sauce and the grater broke. So I made a handle for the grater just out of a, a <laughs> cut of floorboard that I had and I put it on 20 years ago. Very crude, it's got, it's got smoother with wear rather than me actually finishing it. Uh, but that's, that's still going 20 odd years later. So. That's what happens with these quick fixes. <laughs> that's that, probably the that's probably the greatest one. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that's a cheesy <laughs> remark. <laughs> well, it's really rated. It's not more comfortable <laughs> than the original. Indeed, indeed. So are you building a workshop in the garden, Eric? Eric, you're muted. Well, I've been doing it, building it for over a year now. I made the mistake of uh, asking Building Control if they were happy with it, uh, and they've wanted me to jump through all sorts of silly hoops that I've been resisting. So I had to stop for about six months. I'm now back doing what I suggested I was going to do in July last year, except the weather's a bit colder now, but I'm getting there. I'll, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> so is it complete timber, is it? Timber building? Yes, yeah, it was a, a, a green oak uh, kit that I got effectively. It's like a giant IKEA kit. You know, it didn't really come with instructions, just a couple of pictures and a big, <laughs> huge pile of wood, more wood than I'd ever seen in the one place. Uh, but no, it was good, good fun. Good fun. Yeah, good. Nice to get. I'm, I'm getting there with it. I'm on to the stage where I'm now going to make the doors as well. So that'll be that'll be fun. I've never made anything that big <laughs> before. So. <laughs> It'd be nice to see some pictures of it, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can I can do that, yeah. And yeah, yeah I haven't I haven't got I haven't got anything that I can share on the, on the computer just now, but uh, I can I can pop some pop some in. I'll send some send some to you, Jeffrey. You can you can stick them on somewhere for my on my behalf. Yeah, or, or maybe in a couple of weeks' time you could uh, do, do a five minute um, workshop build. Oh, five, five minutes, maybe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, still, it's very, very much a work in progress. I've got great, great ambitions for how splendid it's going to look when I'm finished, but uh, it's not there yet. What's the size, Eric? Uh, six by six and a half metres. Right, 20 foot long. Yeah. It's a re reasonable, reasonable size. Yes, that, that, was, that was a mistake I made. Permitted developments in, in, in the, the UK have to be uh, less than 30 square metres. So I just made it just a little bit too big, and that means you don't need planning, but you need a building warrant. Wow. And yeah, the, the building control folk are, are bored because they're not allowed out to get out and inspect any of it just now, so they're just diving right into poor folk like me that put their heads above the parapet. <laughs> So, were there any restrictions on the height as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, it had to be under four meters. So it's about, right. uh, oh, it's about three point nine or something. <laughs> so that, that's okay. But uh, yeah, it sounds like a great space. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good, a good, good size space. So I'm looking, looking forward to, to getting into it and yeah. actually making some furniture. It's my first love. <laughs> yeah. So you put electricity in, or? Uh, no, yeah, no, I'm going to have to think about how to do that as well. I mean, the easy way is just to sort of string it from the house on a, oh, you know, yeah. a, a, an overhead thing, but uh, it would be quite nice to put it in underground, so I'm still yeah. sort of debating that as well. Right. You have to be careful because you have to get a contractor to do that because it's an outside building. You have to get somebody with a pet uh, test, you know, with the, not pet, uh, whatever it's called, uh, qualification. Yeah, yeah, you could I do know. it yourself. You could do it yourself to the regulations, and then get them to come in to certify it and give you mm -hmm. a certificate. But otherwise, you won't be insured. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's what I was planning, Jim. I'm going to uh, do, do most of it myself. Uh, I've got some electronic qualifications from a, a previous life, uh, but uh, I can do, do it myself and then get somebody in just to sort of, you know, connect it into the, into the mains uh, and you know, yeah, certify that it's okay, that I've done a reasonable job. Eric, Eric, Eric I'm an unplugged woodworker anyway. Eric, you can run a four-inch uh, pipe. Uh, yeah, I, I would do that. The outbuilding, and then they can just push the pipe through it, uh, the the cable through it. Definitely and do that. Yeah. If you if you put a four-inch pipe, it doesn't need to be as deep underground because if you dig, you'd hit the pipe and not the wires. So uh -huh. um, you can overcome the regs by using other methods. If you because if you just put the bare cable in, you've got to tape over. Anyway, oh, we'll get back to the uh, good, we'll get back on topic. Thanks, Thank you. Move on to uh, to Sean. Uh, I got I got two very crude tools. There's uh, there's this guy, which is basically a block of wood, groove on one side and an escape on the other. And this was until recently my hot dog handle for using my plane for shooting. I just battered it together extremely quickly one day when my hands started getting sore, and it it works and it's actually not too uncomfortable. I always went, oh, I'll refine it a bit once I've been using it, but it was uh, it was good enough that. Um, it literally just goes on with a friction fit and it gives me something to rest my hand on and it's a lot com more comfortable than trying to find a good spot in the plane where you're not messing with the frog yeah. and it worked so actually i bought a proper handle recently when you announced the topic shrenic i was like didn't i just put that in the bin and <laughs> to fish it out again <laughs> um it served me well for about a year and then i, I got something nicer and um, the other was in my long hunt for a bird cage all I could afford because most of the nice ones were uh, very expensive. I cobbled together this contraption. And that's actually a, um, it's a carbide bit for a CNC machine on the tip. You can buy a pack of 10 of them for two or three uh, euro. And then I bought a really, really cheap chuck off eBay, carved myself a crude handle, drilled a hole in the top and glued it in. And <laughs> I used that as my main marking all for about, two years i'd say uh, and it worked really well because the carbide point is really fine you can really get exactly where you want to go you can twist and it cuts a nice divot for starting a drill or anything else um and for a grand total of maybe three or four euro it held up really well for the job and yet again just a little piece of scrap pine that i just whittled away on until it felt okay in my hand and looked reasonably straight and it did the job that's me and you've got enough uh, bits to make another nine yeah, I've got like nine. I've never used any of the other bits of the pack of 10. Nine have just been sitting in their little container since I got it. <laughs> um, this has been, this has never gotten dull. Um, it carbide, isn't it wonderful? I think, I think the hot dog, the hot dog definitely wins the crudest tool so far. That definitely, 100%. I mean, I, I don't know about you, Shrenik, but I think that definitely gets the vote. I don't, I don't know. I might have one that's competing. Uh, <laughs> everybody's getting out big scraps of wood. <laughs> we're, we're, we're warming up for this Lucky's is the not stick. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Tuckwell. Well, I thought I didn't have anything that was crude and was a, a tool for something. But then this theme seemed to emerge early on. And if I click this share button, you can see. Oh my God. Can you see? Uh, I'm seeing. I'm not sure if it's in the same place. Three nails like, in the plank? Three nails in a piece of wood, yeah. Um, and you can see what it's for, obviously. It's, it's for, for a fine adjustment. Um, <laughs> I'll this. Uh, I used this eight years ago. Um, Andy Brown is to blame. He, um, oh, of course. He sent me a text while I was on holiday in Scotland saying, there's a lathe for sale on eBay. It's in Bristol. It's collection only. I think you ought to have a look. And it turned out to be a lovely um, century old Barnes um, treadle powered um, metal turning lathe. And it was a bit greasy and a bit sort of neglected. And here's a chunk of it on my bench as it was then in its greased up state. And you can see that the uh, the chuck wouldn't come off and I've just got the back plate part of the chuck still gripping on but this tool with its three nails into the holes where the screws were a wedge of wood to keep it uh, from turning and a big hammer and that will 
remove, hang on, uh, going the wrong way in the picture, sorry. Uh, to re it's that bit that's coming off and it works a treat. And in fact, it worked so nicely, I've had to make an upgraded version in stronger wood. It only, it's only got two nails on because that's actually all you need. Uh, and that just sits in a little space underneath the lathe down in the basement. And I'd forgotten all about it. So thank you for your welcome reminders, gents. Andy, I have a much more refined version of it, but it doesn't work. It's a piece of boxwood with no nails. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it, it needs I can't a, how it's wrong. brass adjusting knobs. That's the yeah. Trouble. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Andy's uh, taking the lead at this point. Oh, it's touch and go, you know. It's uh... Well, I've, I've not even got the first one anymore, and that was so crude it... Uh, I think the addition of the nails puts it up a level. Didn't I mean, you know, if you'd have used, you know, bits of old nails. Maybe. Oh, they were rusty nails that I'd saved. Oh, they were? Oh, okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, that's I've been probably... saving nails since I was about 10, you know. I've, I've Ox oxidized, to something now. Mm -hmm. oxidized nails, not rusty nails. Yeah, yeah, matured. Um, artisan nails. Patin patinated. Yeah, in, in my dad's old tobacco tins, especially. Yeah. Climate control right. conditions. Have I to boil be. mine up to make glue. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll put my Ball. name down for a bottle. Ball. Oh, yeah. Ball. So I've got this, but I'm now thinking that it's, it's actually. Sorry, Sorry yeah. it was um, Will, Will, Will Graham was next. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Will Graham, sorry, I'll cut Paul, we'll come back to you. Okay. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So um, when I started, I was doing a lot of casework, and this is uh, the first tool I made. It's just a simple print stick. Um, this is about 25 years old, and um, it was laying around my shop uh, after that, and it kind of got bashed up, and I had to make some repairs to it, and I took out the old screw, and I had... Um, I picked up a little brass screw to make it fancy, but um, it's uh, been with me and it's still using it. And, uh, on the cabin I'm working on right now. Um, Can you hold it up? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, pinch sticks. Yeah. And um, oh, it's just, oh, story stick we call them. No, it's not a story stick, isn't it? No, it's not a pinch stick. It's uh, for oh. doing the forty-five for the angle and squareness on your case. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, and um, I did, it was um, the first tool I ever made, and um, I had to go back and repair it, and I used some uh, bamboo skewers to hold these onto the the cherry, and I uh, replaced it, and now it sits in a place in honor in one of my um, my um, my wall things. And this is my first plane. I made it myself. This is before I bought a, uh, a Veritas plane. And it, it, I couldn't afford uh, a real plane. Of, sorry, this is a real plane, as it turned out. Um, I had a lot of trouble keeping the bottom flat because it kind of twisted and bowed a little bit. But I just tuned it up a few months ago. And it's actually a pretty good little jack plane. I'm oh, sorry. And, um, I just used it on some walnut that I had close to my bench, and it's actually done a pretty good job. It's not perfect, but um, this was my plane for um, about two years. And now, Hawk, uh, is that a hawk iron in there? Yeah, it's a hawk iron. I could uh, the, the guy at Lee Valley, I, I couldn't believe the prices of planes back then. I can afford them now, or did. Um, but the... Um, he, I, he said, well, why don't you try this? And he showed me uh, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the, the designs. And I got some of that stuff and I got the Hawk Blade. So this is one of my her first uh, purchase blade was a Hawk Blade, plane, blade, iron. So that's it. Where did you get the hardware for the pinch sticks? This was, this was, there's no hardware. It's just a bolt here. Um, oh. I replaced the original. It was just a, a, a screw with, uh, it wasn't even gnarled knob. It was a pan head originally. 
And um, oh, so I see. It's a wooden it. block you made. Yeah, that's a wooden block. It's uh, pieces of uh, cherry, and they're very small. It's um, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job here. Uh, it's got one flat piece and two flats to form a U glued together. Uh, and then um, I used some, redid this and I used some bamboo skewers to go through on the sides all, all the way through to uh, glue it to the thing. And that's the same on the other end as well. Very nice. Yeah, good. Yeah, so that was um, the first tool I've made and I've become quite um, interested what? in doing some more. Why did you put the hole? in the end of the pinch stick there. Is that just so that you can pull one end out easier or to hang it? It's to hang. Ah, so okay. Right here. There we go. Well, hang it all. That's great. <laughs> so, and then uh, and I've actually got a longer one because I then had to do some cases that are a little bit, but that was a lot of fun. And um, when I, I was cleaning up one day, I found it and said, hey, it's pretty good. I cleaned it up, put it up there. Well, I actually been using it every time I do casework. So it's, um, that's nice. That's the uh, old, uh, first thing I did was crew. Thank you. Good idea. Like you had a wall mounted pencil sharpener there when you hung that back. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. It's not actually on the wall. It's actually on the beam in my basement. All right. Uh, is that convenient? Um, yeah, because I'm tall and um, I can bang my head on something here. I can bang my head on the beam side. I just didn't have anything firm to put that on. And the, uh, the, the other sharpeners, like the, that's an old school sharpener, do a pretty good job, but that actually gives me a fairly sharp point. Right. I love mine. Yeah. So um, that's actually, I've only had that for a uh, few months. I found it at a flea market or something like that. Um, and um, yeah, I scrounged a little bit. <laughs> Cheers, Will. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to uh, Paul. Okay, so no one I've made, uh, I'll be honest, but it's one which I picked up in a few other things and I thought, well, it's fairly crude, but seeing some of the other things today, I'm now thinking this is possibly a bit more refined. Scraper? It's just a little scraper, but basically it's a hacksaw blade, which has been sharpened. Well, they've actually put an escapement in, which is a bit bizarre. And it's got... So it's just basically two pieces of wood screwed together, and it's just, it's just literally clamped in. It appears to work, though, so... It is the hacksaw blade uh, toothed down? So more like a veneer? Uh, no, 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 it's it's basically it's tooth up and the, the file the teeth off for no apparent reason. And um, it looks like they've sharpened the actual base of the, uh, they've actually sharpened the, uh, the, the actual uh, blade to just get a finer point. You know, to actually get a blade, in other words. But it, I just tried it on a lollipop stick and it's, it appears to work. So I said this came with a uh, like 50 molding planes and various other bits. So an interesting thing. Initially, I thought, what the hell is that? But I, as I say, I've actually tried it and yeah, I think it could actually be quite useful. I've got one very, very similar. Yeah. But I think I think it's definitely. Do you think it's actually? It's not a sold product, though, is it? It's just something which no, is no. not with those folks. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and a couple of door, door plates. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, you, were you were lucky. You got handles on yours. Yeah, it's got nice handles on both sides. Because they've sat counter sunk the screws, you don't win the crudeness one though. They've got to be sticking out. <laughs> they're uh, they're not clocked though. Oh, uh, there is that to it. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott. Oh, I was just unmuting myself. Um. I started last year during lockdown, um, sitting here, carving, 
And something I'd never tried was to carve a spiral, um, which I found really challenging to start with. But right in the bottom in there, where it's square, I didn't have anything to get in there. Um, and being during lockdown, um, basically, I took a pair of mole grips, uh, needle ones, ones, and in the end of it, I just sharpened a piece of metal that I found in a, a wiper blade. So in your wiper blades, when you strip them apart, there's metal in there. I've got no idea. Somebody might know what it's made of, but I think it's kind of sprung steel. Yeah, it's got a kind of noise to it. So I just started sharpening these up and using them to actually go into the bottom, just to square out and flatten off the bottom of there. But then during lockdown, I got a bit crazy. Am I allowed to screen share? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, what's happening here? Excuse me, sorry. Did I get this? Uh, we'll go back. There it is. Oh, wow. So I started, and what I done was um, I decided to take that, what I was doing there with the, the metal, and I heat treated it, and I carved in the end in here. I put a little gouge in it, and I made a little bevel edge chisel, and I made a mortise chisel, and put little beach, and put little beach handles on. So I might win the prize for the smallest, but then I thought, and, and this one here was so much easier to hold rather than using the mole grips for getting into some of my carvings, and the other ones were handy too, just for doing little carvings. So then I thought, um, you need a mallet. What's you need a mallet? Of course you do. So. I then made a, a lead wood yeah, head and yeah, yeah. A, oh my God. a maple <laughs> mallet for them. And, and it's got lead in it? No, no, it's just oh. a lead wood. It's actually really, really heavy. Oh, you obviously know about lead wood. But yeah. it's oh, wood lead wood. Spike. Okay. Yeah, yeah lead wood. Um, and there's comparison with both of them together. I love it. And do really oh, well. So great. taking that further than that, um, I then... Um, took the I thought if you've got a small gouge why can't you use it then to do small carvings and carved a, a tiny flower into just a piece of that's just basswood linden uh, English lime I think there's three names for it I think they're all roughly the same basswood American I think linden European and English lime um, and I had to have like magnifying glasses on for doing that um, but I, I just thought I'd challenge myself why have a small gouge and then not use it um I then made, and this is all miniature work, a small plane mallet for a, a miniature canner, Japanese canner. And I've not finished with the miniature stuff yet. And it's some of the joints that I made, a twisted dovetail. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> Kawaii Tsuziki. Do not judge me on my, my way of saying that. Um... And that was at a part before it was made. Wow, how crude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do you know what? I didn't have, sorry. And then obviously I moved on to challenging myself to small dovetails. And I'm not sure how small I could go with them yet. Yeah. I think I could go a lot smaller. And we left crude behind. Yeah, we left crude behind years ago. Yeah. I then used, because I made a little mortise chisel, I decided to, can you guys see that okay? That's your square. I then made, uh, because the mortise chisel was one millimeter, I thought I'd challenge myself to a one millimeter mortise and tenon. Um, I think you have to stop saying the word challenge. I think you've accomplished all of them. <laughs> I'm not sure any of it's a challenge for you. They're really nice. Yeah. Look at that. So my plan with that mortise chisel then is to, I'm going to scale down the door that the students make in college, and it being about 1983 size door, I'll scale that down to 1 in 10, and that will give me um, 45, it'll give me 1.5 millimeter mortise and tenons, I'll make a new chisel for them obviously, and do haunch, but that's the through mortise and tenon, just a challenge myself on that, so, sorry. Uh, you need a tiny little panel razor there, Scott. I think I do, yeah. and I'm going to I'm going to make one. I think I'll make myself some little, um, and then obviously, I then thought, well, if I'm going to do dovetails, then I need a little box for keeping my chisels in, <laughs> and made yeah, a little dovetail box. 
So did you just harden the material when you said you treated it, the, the metal? Yeah, well, the chisels, um, the chisels basically, I'll just stop screen sharing. The, the chisels basically, I just put over the stove. I had no idea how to harden. I didn't have a blowtorch here or anything. And I just put them in the gas stove and heated them up and then dropped them in vegetable oil. Right. Um, and it just gave them, do you know what? As long as they were holding an edge, I was happy. Um, they didn't have to be. And basically, the material was just kind of, it's kind of sprung steel, I think, out of windscreen yeah. wipers. Right. Um, to cut, very, very dense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what composition it is, but once heat treated, I mean, they make great wee chisels, and I'll make more. But like the crudeness that. was obviously the point. Just a piece of metal and a pair of mole grips. Yeah, yeah. Scott, I can't wait till you, uh, till you make the full full chisel set with those. Yeah. Are you going to put a saw well, till inside the box? Um, maybe. I, I've bought saws since then. I've bought Japanese saws. Um, oh! little, little pool saws. That's not the smallest, though. This one here is a 0.1 millimetre. It fits in a Swan Morton blade. So that's 0.1 millimetre with 64 TPI. <laughs> where where do you get the blades for those, Scott? Eve and um, Amazon. They are photo etched. So, the uh, so what, are they, what are they called? Photo etched. Are those but made those by are... Swan? Uh, are those made by Swan Morton, Scott? Those are those medical saws because that's no, a scalpel, I, I, isn't it? By... Yeah, it's a Swan Morton scalpel. And then the blade just fits in that. I've got a whole pack of them. You get lots of them. And the smallest one 64 TPI. I think that one is actually 30, 31 TPI. We pull saw. So if I type in Amazon, I type in what? Photo etched blades. Okay. Maybe. I'll send you a link if I can find it, Jim. It's okay. All right. Before we... I think they may be for model making. Yeah. If, before yeah, we go quite, too they're far. They're quite common among uh, plastic modelers. Before we go too far off time, let's move on to uh, Rusty. Thanks. Yeah, that was brilliant, Scott. Thank you. Um, so I have five tools, but I couldn't find the, the one I wanted to show. And that was probably the crudest. It, it was a plank of wood with a flathead screw in it. And you can use it to make a bead. But I couldn't find it. So I found a much more refined version. It holds... Uh, beating iron and it was the iron was too far and I couldn't get it out so I added a little piece and I'm holding it with a uh, blue tape and that's what I used to to put a bead in the chair I just finished and the other one is uh it's a much more refined version of the hot dog for the shooting plane um so that's a handle that I actually drilled into my Veritas plane to attach it to, and it works great. And then the third one I use the most, and you can actually buy a gauge like this, and this is for chair making. So when you're roughing out spindles from uh, green wood, you rough it out to 13 16 and that's the corner. And then you, while it's still green, you refine one end to 7 16 and the other to 9 16 and after you kiln dried them, you fit it to half inch, one end, and the other one goes into uh, five sixteenths, but this is a little bit oversized, it's 11 30 second. And so you can buy one of those in um, aluminum, I think, but I was too cheap to pay 60 bucks for it and then $11 for shipping. But the last one is the most indispensable for me. I don't know if any of you can guess what it is. That's if you can guess what it is, I'll is make this, you one. Yeah, I think I can. What, is, what is that? Hold your uh, saw. It's a shop. Copy a saw. Tiny motor box? No. <laughs> Not for topping a saw? Nope. It's got something to do with spoke, spoke shaves, something. Nope. Is that for a card scraper? Yes, or... indeed it is. This is to sharpen the top of a card scraper that you put in the vise and you put this oh, jo jointing top it. and you're making sure that you're sharpening at 90 degrees to the sides. Or get course, that. I'm not 
sharper at 90 degrees to the side because I have a little bit of an angle there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but those are my crew tools. Rusty, who is sitting next to you? Yeah, who's, who's, oh, this is my father-in-law. He's supposed to be invisible, but but he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't nice successful. At it. <laughs> and what was your father-in-law's name? He's the sponsor of the card. <laughs> what was his name? Rusty. Yeah. What's his name? His name is Dale. Dale. Hi Dale. Hi Dale. Welcome. Welcome Thank Dale. Thank you. Welcome. You don't have to hide. We've seen <laughs> Rusty's. <laughs> well, it was instrumental I'm... for my woodworking. He bought me a set of microplaner uh, files about six years ago, and that's what got me into woodworking the second time. Oh, very nice. That's enough for Jeffrey to make him do next week's talk, I think. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've never had a Dale on, so it'd be great to have a Dale, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think the closest we've had is Daryl. <laughs> Didn't we have a hill? A hill and Dale? Uh, well, uh, no, we, we were hoping to get a valley, but we never got the valley either. Ah, there you go, there you go. Well, I'm, I'm going to come, come to the conclusion of the talk with my con contribution tonight. And that was a panel gauge. I didn't have a panel gauge when I needed one. So I made one. This is a reclaimed piece from I think a bed slat or something I'm not entirely sure what it was from I have no idea what the wood is I put two nails on this side the nails are way too long so they're sticking out held it onto a piece which I'd planed a square edge onto well roughly square uh, and put a nail in this end at the measurement I needed it at I marked the hole from the underside where I'd been marking from and drilled through so even if my drilling wasn't straight it was the pin still still come out the right place it works um but now more recently about three years on i'm making marking gauges and hopefully in the next couple of weeks i might have a go at making a panel gauge as well and finally end up with a panel gauge can we see the wedge in the marking gauge please uh yeah so oh, right there you go the wedge however this wedge as I was showing just before we started the call, if I were to pop it open, because it's quite stiff, it falls out. So here's another marking gauge in progress. Uh, the stem is currently in my workshop, so it's not here, uh, but the wedge is captive. So right now I can put the wedge in, but once the stem is in place, the wedge cannot be pulled out. Yeah. So. I'd have to remove the stem to pull the wedge out. Yep, and, and also made, that's the way they made them in the 1700s. Yeah, so this oh. is apparently a French style marking gauge. Also, the um, the discussion we had during the week. I don't know if you wanted to share your uh, experiences with uh, gramophone record. Um, yeah, so I'm using a gramophone pin. Uh, the ones that I got are the spare point ones. Um, it's got a really, really fine point on it. Uh, I've, I've put one in on this gauge so far. That's as much as I've really tried. I haven't got a lot more experience to share on that. Yeah, they're, they're actually, because I, when I uh, made the, um, when we did the project on Unplug Woodworker Group, which is a build along marking gauge, and it was basically the uh, cam lock twist gauge, which was fascinating in itself. Um, there were three types of cutters and one of them was just a pin. And um, it, you, if you buy 78 record needles, they're already rock hard. I mean, you, you couldn't, it's almost impossible to damage them. Um, and they make superb uh, replacement pins or pins for homemade marking gauges. And that's what Jerry Jones uses as well. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to uh, ask Andy Brown as the last uh, last guest for tonight. Got to be the crudest. <laughs> ah, here we go. Can you see that, or do we need more light? No, we can see. You've you might have seen this before. I I needed to make that, and I hadn't got a plane. 
believe it or not, back then. <laughs> you couldn't find it anyway. Oh, hang on. It's the wrong way around. There you go. So, there's me playing. Blue. Nice wedge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good, a good target for the wedge. I should have got the grain the other way around, I reckon. But I don't think you got it called a sword as well. I think you need to start again. Yeah. Uh, but, but that throat's doing well. <laughs> it worked. An absolute dream. That's brilliant. Yeah. And back in the day, this was the very first oil stone I got that wasn't in a box. So I thought, well, I'll just wrap it up in this for now. So this is my, <laughs> this is my crude oil stone... Um, that's, oh, pipe, that's pipe insulation, isn't it? It is pipe insulation, yes. And that's been on there since the 80s, is that it? Is that a Charlie Forest? Yeah, what's left of it. Oh, yeah. But, it is a life in that, yeah? Yeah. I mean, you have to go some. Break, as long as it don't break it tonight, we're all right. <laughs> but, but going back to um, scraper blades... Scraper holders. <laughs> oh wow! That, yep, it worked shifting. Work. <laughs> Once we got them talked up, it weren't moving anywhere. <laughs> bit bit rough on the fingers though, because I ain't got any handles. <laughs> and I didn't make this. Obviously, this is one of the latest purchases. So if you're going to need something to do a job and you're not got it you had a pulley anyway let's, let's do this it'll be easier there you go bottom of a mast is it so they mounted the pulley in a piece of beam So it was a wood pulley too, obviously. Wooden pulley, yeah. Wormwood. Or the bugs. Yeah. And a bit a bit of a bit of metal nailed over the face was a pivot. That still it still it still spins. But that was in the top of that workshop where I've just been raiding. Cool. So I said I like that. So there you go. You're going to treat it for powder post? Oh, no, no. It, it's, it's um, what do you call it? Um, Petrified. Um, oh, historic woodworm, right? They, they've got an old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, finding a jar large enough to put it in to soak it in kerosene is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean... Uh, no, I ain't cleaned the dust off it yet, so it's only it's only just got here. <laughs> so, but that yes, I've got other bits and pieces, but I can't find them. I've been out here, I don't know how long trying to find bits. <laughs> <laughs> if you do well, want to dip it, you could always wait till it warms up a bit and borrow the neighbours' uh, children's paddling pool. They wouldn't mind, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, well, cheers, everyone. Thanks tonight for cheers. a good talk. I know some of the tools were crude and others, but you know, cheers to everyone. Cheers yeah. to the bench. Cheers, Ronnie. Well done. Cheers, Ronnie.